I've decided to take it one step further and go into uh, living in an SUV. So there's a couple things when I started that is how would that look because I wanted to be comfortable in living in, in the SUV you see behind me. You ever thought, hey, I'd like to see the world? It'd be great if I could just go where I want to go with no bounds, no limits. If I had income that I could do remotely, I can do anywhere in the world, I can go and experience and see what I want to experience and see. Isn't that what life's about? Life is about a journey, about going on that road. How would you like to wake up in the morning with a stream running right by you? Well, you can do that. You can create a remote income that's like no tomorrow. Before the pandemic, our, with a driverpreneur program, uh, our intent was to show you how you can make a remote income out of your vehicle. Uh, you can do it with the Ride Local platform, which gives you 100% of fares and tips, but you also can do it with other uh, partnering apps uh, that create remote income. The, the secret is to find the most profitable of all of them or the profitable jobs within each platform and then have a full-time writing base. So that's really the secret of it. And so going into the future, what I decided to do is literally become a, a what one would call a gypsy or a nomad. I'm kind of the type of person that likes to travel from different areas and it might be like just 10 miles from each area. But that's, I've done that pretty much my whole life, so in reality, I have been a nomad. The difference is, is my house uh, was a stationary brick and mortar, where now I've decided to take it one step further and go into becoming, uh, living in an SUV. So, there's a couple things when I started that, is how would that look, because I wanted to be comfortable in living in, in the SUV you see behind me. When I, you know, when I first started thinking about living that way, like almost like on the road, there was a couple options I had. I had a class A, class C, I could do the trailer, you know, the, the trailer, uh, travel trailer, or I could do uh, a utility trailer and have it built out. And really, that was really my goal to do, start out with that. I was going to take like a 5x8 trailer and have a company uh, that manufactures trailers in Georgia and build it out. And I could pick options of how what I wanted to have on there for them to do and obviously uh, the things that I thought confident enough that I could do. Now, I, that when I, one thing is uh, I found out researching, I watched a lot of YouTube videos dealing with van life, dealing with SUV living, uh, car living, nomad living. And one of the guys that are instrumental in what I'm doing right now is Bob Wells. Uh, and with our, our cheap RV living and the reason being is because I kind of I started out watching his YouTube videos to get the basics and to know the fundamentals of how to do that and how does that transpire because we all have to know what we need to do uh, as we're living in a vehicle an RV or anything is to take care of the essential needs of life but Bob Wells did teach me one thing he said just get into it, get into whatever you want to get into, get into it and start doing it. You don't have to have it built out or anything and then see how that works with you. So when I first started, it was like August 15th of this year, when I first started becoming uh, living as a nomad, uh, I did it from the idea of traveling from Yuma because I was already down in Yuma and come back to Grand Rapids, Michigan. And I figured in that time, I can go ahead and see how I feel by living in my RV or my RAV4 and then uh, see how that would work. So initially I had the trailer that was going to be built and I was going to come to Grand Rapids, Michigan and then when I was done visiting and stay, having my stay in Michigan I was going to go ahead and go down to Georgia and then go ahead and make my loop back to Yuma. As I was going from Yuma to Grand Rapids a lot of things transpired. Uh, but one of the things I found out is the biggest problem I have is I didn't want to have anything that I could just drop off somewhere because my first problem is where would you drop it off? If I had a utility trailer that was built out and I wanted to, let's say I wanted to go to Nebraska, Lincoln, Nebraska, and I want to spend some time in that city, where would I put that trailer 
I'd have to get a camping site, you know, so there's expense already built into the whole, the idea of, of traveling with a trailer. So that was a problem I had. So, so by the time I got to Grand Rapids, I, I thought to myself, I, that's not what, that wasn't convenient for me. And then as I was going through and going to these various cities, because I just didn't drive from Union and Grand Rapids, I stopped along the way and visited different various places. Well, while I was there, obviously I was living as if I was living as a nomad. It was my trial run, but it got me to understand that trailer was something I wanted. And so the best thing I could do is Bob always says, no matter what you do, I don't care if it's whether you know whether you have to uh, go to the bathroom or whether you have to sleep. But the most important thing in anything that you do, you have to be comfortable in sleeping. So I figured let's start with sleeping. So that was the most important thing for me. So obviously I hit that area and um, I've done some things living in the RAV4 that has made it really not only convenient, but also comfortable. One thing I do like about it is that I can uh, pretty much go anywhere. Uh, and I do like the idea of incognito, is uh, sleeping in my vehicle without anybody knowing I'm doing it. So I do like that idea because that kind of opens up a lot of areas in which I can uh, spend the night. Uh, spending the night I thought would be a big problem. It hasn't been a problem. Uh, this is, I just left Grand Rapids uh, th this morning and I'm in uh, Missouri right now. Now, in order for me to do this, I have to make sure I, I have income because you can't, I mean, you can't survive without income, whether I'm a nomad on the road or whether I have a brick and mortar. So I maintain my income by various ways, but what I did is I took my regular income and I can teach people how to do that. And that's the unique thing about the Driverpreneur program is I can teach you how to create some income that not only involves driving, all right, but then all other income, my primary income, which has nothing to do with driving. I can sit right here and still, and still do my job every day. Nice thing about it is I created my job that I was having, uh, I was doing prior to doing this. Uh, the difference is that I was in a brick and mortar. When the pandemic hit, it became a remote job. So that's kind of played into what I was thinking to do or what I wanted to do for the future. So that's what I do every morning. Now, one thing nice, if I'm in Yuma, there's a three hour difference. So uh, when I get up at four o'clock and I start working, people were already just starting to work over in the Michigan area. So as far as talking to cost clients in Michigan and so on, it's kind of like easier to do. Uh, so that's what I do. And then I supplement that income through the platform of Ride Local and then some other things that I do as well. And, uh, I'll talk a little bit more about that in the coming videos. So that's really what this is about. It's about teaching you how to maybe live, live as a nomad, and if you choose not to, but at least live to the point where you can choose to make the money you want, how you make it, and how much you make. And so uh, come on with, to the ride with me, and I'd love to have you along because I'd love to show you how uh, you can make additional income, but in the same token, enrich and change your life. Because I, I just, I mean, I should just tired and sick and tired of anxiety in your life, and that's really what the traditional rat race gives you. So if you want to support us and want of uh, what we're doing, because uh, our whole intent is to touch lives through the use of by uh, changing their lives by increasing their income. If you want to follow with us, by we encourage you to do, please subscribe below because that's really what it's all about. If you can subscribe below, hit the notification bell because every time I come out with a video, and I'm going to be coming out with a lot of them, and it's going to be on my travels, uh, and some of it will be on how to make money, and so on. But please follow along with us. I would love you to do that. I welcome you aboard. Good morning. Good morning. 
let you know that this is the first time I actually spent the night in Walmart. Uh, I came and drove in last night. To, I got in here relatively early, like at 5.30. I thought I just wanted to rest. Uh, so I drove in here and I found a Walmart. Uh, actually, I found the Walmart on an app I have. Uh, so I came in here, I seen a couple RVs, a couple trailers, just some cars, uh, people sleeping in their car at night as well. I moved in here and then I had something to eat in the car and uh, kind of just laid back and watched some YouTube videos and uh, I said actually Bob Wells, I kind of catching up on some of his videos. And then I woke up this morning and uh, God, I slept really good. I kept the, uh, I have a sunroof, I kept that open just a little bit. Uh, in order to get a cross breeze and I always keep fans going so I have fans that are rechargeable by USB you know to make sure I have air movement that's going constantly all night I got a little chillier the, when I got more into like 5 o'clock in the morning when I woke up about 5 a little chilly uh, probably because I left the sunroof all open but it was kind of nice last night to do that so anyhow this is where I'm at uh, a Walmart parking lot, uh, first time for being a nomad. I've been a nomad since August 15th, and so uh, this is actually the first time I've done a Walmart night. A lot of people say to me, hey, where do you sleep? Where do you sleep? Well, actually, I really don't think about it too much. Uh, I have ideas of where to sleep and what's better for me and where I feel more safe. Uh, but other than that, I really don't think about it until I get down to ready to bed down for the night. Then I start, you know, then I'm looking at uh, places I could possibly uh, sleep for the night. Very important not to sleep in areas that parking uh, is not allowed because really that's the only violation you're really going to get is parking in a spot that, or sleeping overnight in an area that you shouldn't. So you know, I will come up with a video down the road. It'll tell a little bit more about you know how I make my selections and what areas do I sleep in. What do I, what's my most comfortable area to try to find uh, the bed down for the night? Although the way I'm driving it now, a lot of times I I have done parks or uh, street parking, and just pulled right in later at night when it was dark and uh, just went to bed and then woke up before anybody got out in the morning which I normally wake up earlier, so that's not really a problem. And good morning to you. I just want to tell you, enjoy your day, and, and uh, I want to leave one thought for you. I want you to go out today and try to look for somebody that you can say a kind word to, whether that's uh, to say hello, good morning, or whatever it is. Try to seek out to be nice to people. I mean, even to open up a door if, if you're going into a restaurant and you have the opportunity to open up a door. But just, just to smile and be happy today and see how many people you can in, in, inflict, I guess. In fact, inflict with uh, the happy smile syndrome. So I challenge everyone in grade as you're going out, grocery shopping, wherever you go, be happy, smile, keep a smile on your face, and try to think happy thoughts because really... If you are a Christian and you follow Christ, people don't want to see angry Christians. They want to see happy Christians. Otherwise, what's what what would reason would they want to follow Christ? Because they're unhappy being a not following Christ. So if they follow Christ, there should be a change, and we should have God's Spirit within us, uh, and and actually be happy and uh, smile and make other people feel happy for the day as well because sometimes that one little smile or that laugh you can create from another person is enough to really make their day all right have a good day and uh, we'll talk to you again check out this owl i seen early in the morning and a fan in my sunroof creates a fantastic fan at a fraction of the cost